Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Canada 150 event in Clarenville. My name is Richard Churchill, and I am the Public Relations Representative with the Canada 150 Committee here in our town. It's my pleasure to be one of your MCs this evening, along with Jill Monk. As part of the town of Clarenville's Canada 150 celebrations, a special project was created to recognize, preserve, and celebrate the individuals and groups who have made significant contributions to creating our town, our place in Canada. 150 Faces of Clarenville launched in January of 2017, and over the last year, as well as the last several months of 2018, we have been recognizing individuals and groups who have had a measurable impact on our community through their contributions, accomplishments, commitment, or perseverance. Through this award, the Clarenville Canada 150 Committee has recognized and celebrated the story of many individuals or groups who have had an impact on our community in a number of areas, including the arts, culture and heritage, sport and recreation, and leadership and volunteerism, many of whom are here with us this evening in our final presentation. This evening, we continue and we conclude to celebrate and share the stories of those individuals and groups who have played an important role in shaping this great community we call home. Without a doubt, it's been a challenge to select and recognize these individuals and groups. And on behalf of the Canada 150 Committee in Clarenville, I would like to thank everyone who has taken the time to put forth a nomination. Moreover, we must remember that all those nominated have made an impact, and everyone in Clarenville, whether you've been selected or not, play an important role in the beautiful tapestry that makes up this great community. Now, folks, I would like everyone to please stand and will be led in all Canada by Ms. Lundgren and her students. <laughs> individuals, 
groups, small groups, large groups, who have had a significant impact on life in Clarenville. We have not always been 6,300 people. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, people have moved to Clarenville. And one thing I can say as I go down through the list of people, that the people that have moved here have embraced our town and wanted to get involved in our town and, of course, obviously, very willingly gave of their time to make Clarenville the town that it is today. Speaking of volunteers, I want to thank those behind me because the Canada 150 program has been a success and the 150 faces of Clarenville have been a success. But it has taken a lot of time and I want to thank them on your behalf for that. Before I sit down, I also want to mention to you that on April the 15th through the 21st is Newfoundland Volunteer Week. And I want you to reach out and to thank a volunteer for their impact in our town. Thank you very much. I'd now like to uh, call upon MHA Colin Holloway to bring greetings as well. Well, good evening, Mayor Russell. Uh, I think there's some members of town council are here, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, honored guests. Thank you for the invitation to bring greetings on behalf of the provincial government and my colleagues in the House of Assembly. The 150 Faces of Clarenville Initiative celebrates the individuals, groups, and organizations who have made measurable contributions to this community through their efforts, compassion, and perseverance. I would like to commend Mayor Russell and the Town Council, as well as the members of the 150 Faces uh, Nomination Committee for organizing this uniquely innovative program. Having grown up nearby Port Blanford, I got to see firsthand Clarenville's growth and expansion into a regional service center. There is no doubt that individuals and families move into this area because of the services provided here, but also for the relationships and the friends they developed with the people and the organizations that make up this community. As a young person, I, like perhaps so many of you here tonight, look forward to the weekly trips to Clarenville to visit places like the old chain store, in the old drugstore that was located in the corner of the shopping center. Over time, as Clarendon has grown, these businesses have closed and new, more modern businesses have been built. All of this is added to the service center we have here today. I remember when I transferred into grade eight in Clarendon High School. It was somewhat of an overwhelming experience uh, at that age as I was going into a class of 40 students most of whom I had never met before. Over the years, I have made so many friends in this community, many of whom continue to make Clarenville their home today. Many of these same individuals have become the leaders of today, giving freely of their time and their talent to the continued prosperity of this community. After graduating with an undergraduate degree at Memorial University and returning to this area in 1992, I started working in Bonavista but covering the Clarenville area. In a very short time, I began volunteering with many of the great organizations that have contributed to the social fabric of this community. Many of these organizations still exist here today. In 2017, when the town of Clarenville launched the 150 Faces of Clarenville Initiative as part of Canada's 150th birthday celebration, I have to admit, I found the idea very unique and innovative. Over the past number of months, the 150 Faces of Clarenville Committee have honored community groups and individuals from all age categories, each of which have made a measurable impact on this community. Canada is a wonderful country, and whenever I travel abroad, I am proud to say that I am Canadian. But more importantly, the spirit and generosity displayed by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians around the globe is second to none. That reputation is because of communities like Clarendale and the people who live here. In my role as the MHA, I have stood in the House of Assembly and I have talked about this initiative and three of the in individuals who have already received this award, namely George Martin, 
Major Annette Verdi, and of course, our good friend, Victoria Bess. Last night, I stood in this very same theater as I brought greetings to the board and members of the Claremont Area Co-op. As many of you would know, this year the Co-op is celebrating its 50th anniversary. As I looked at the screen, looking at pictures of past board members, I could not help but pay attention to the fact that the Co-op has also been recognized to the 150 basis of Claremont Award. There are so many de deserving individuals and organizations. I am pleased to see many of you here tonight. In my estimation, the 150 faces of the Claremont Committee have done a remarkable job in identifying and honoring those who have lived in this community, who have helped to make Claremont a great community in which to live. As the Mayor said, National Volunteer Week is from April 15th to the 21st, and the theme this year is the valuing of volunteering. 2018 is the 40th anniversary of celebrating National Volunteer Week in Newfoundland and Labrador. So events like tonight add to this legacy. I'm certain you will do more. You will do more to say thank you and honor all the volunteers who have given so generously to this community when the official launch of National Volunteer Week begins in just a few short weeks from now. So on behalf of the entire Terranova District, and all my colleagues in the House of Assembly, bravo. You and the Town Council are to be commended for a job well done. Thank you once again for the opportunity to bring greetings here tonight. Thank you very much, Paula, for bringing those wonderful words of greeting from the provincial government. Well, folks, we're going to uh, commence with our first award uh, presentation for this evening. And in, uh, I guess, the, the nature, we have a lot of people to get through. We're going to, uh, at the end, ask the, the people who have been recognized in their family to uh, come here to my left. And you'll have a picture taken. And while that picture is being taken, uh, the next award will be read. So the first 150 Faces of Clarenville presentation for this evening is to Tony Rose. Tony Rose has lived in Clarenville all his life. He is married to his wife Brenda and they have two children, Grant and Grace. Tony has been a community volunteer in many capacities. He has volunteered with various organizations over the years including Clarenville Minor Hockey, Flying Blades Skating Club, High School Sports, and the Newfoundland and Labrador Winter Games. Tony has been a member of the Clarenville Fire Department for 27 years and was the town's fire chief from 2000 to 2008 before accepting a job with Fire and Emergency Services Newfoundland and Labrador as a fire protection officer. Tony is the provincial representative on the National Fire Protection Association's public education network. In the early years with the Clarenville Fire Department, Tony was introduced to the charity of muscular dystrophy. He was tasked with organizing the fire department's annual boot drive for muscular dystrophy, and his involvement with the organization grew from there. Since 1954, firefighters across Canada have raised over $3 million for this charity. Tony has been the provincial representative on the National Firefighter Relations Committee for Muscular Dystrophy Canada for 15 years. In 2016, Tony was named the National Firefighter of the Year. Presently, Tony is the chair of the National Firefighter Relations Committee and sits on the board of directors for Muscular Dystrophy Canada. We are very pleased to name Tony Rose as a Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville. Thank you. Family, friends, and giving to others have always been her main priorities in life. 
She has always enjoyed what she says herself are the simple things like sitting around a campfire and telling stories and singing songs. Along with her brother Owen Green and her friend Donna Slade, she sings in their band known as The Dits. They have entertained many with their original songs written by Donna, as well as some popular classics. Over the years, they have performed at many benefit concerts within Clarenville and its surrounding communities. Keeping close to their roots, they also perform at the Fogo Festival every summer. Two years ago, Donna's band represented Clarenville in the Bayman vs. Townies competition at O'Reilly's Irish Pub in St. John's. Needless to say, her stories mixed in with their beautiful songs won the hearts of many and first place in this competition. Donna has always been very creative and has a special ability to make up a story, poem, or sign to match any situation. Her many signs and poems range from lighthearted and extremely funny to thoughtful and inspirational. In 2011, Donna was diagnosed with breast cancer. Since then, she has experienced many ups and downs, but through it all, one of her main goals has been to help anyone who has had to or might have to share this experience. In the middle of chemotherapy treatment, she put together a small book entitled, Every Step of the Way, My Journey with Cancer. It is a blend of her feelings in true, tell it like it is style, but mostly it conveys a very important message that you are not alone in this fight. I am here with you. Donna has made helping cancer patients and their families her mission. During her stays at the Daffodil Place during her treatment, she sang and entertained. She is a member of the Treasure Chest Ladies, a group who fundraises to help other breast cancer patients attend an annual breast cancer conference. She has sold her book and donated any money she made to the Cancer Society. Finally, she has offered every person she has met her cancer, her ear, and her heart, as she is always there to offer her understanding of their situation. I'm very pleased to be here this evening to award Donna London with a Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville recognition. I would like to share the actual nomination as it was written by one of her former students. Having joined the Clarenville High School over 20 years ago, Caroline has been an exceptional community leader for many years. Miss Bungie is a phenomenal art teacher at Clarenville High that extends her kindness and caring attitude far out within the community. Miss Bungie is an honest, caring, dedicated teacher and an astounding role model for many students. Pouring hundreds of hours into her work, Miss Bungie goes above and beyond to provide her students with an unparalleled level of education both inside and outside of the classroom. Hosting numerous after school activities, Miss Bungie is always there to lend a helping hand. Miss Bungie has led the school's art club for many years taking in all students that wish to engage with art on many different platforms and express an array of artistic capabilities. A few years back, I had the pleasure of working with Ms. Bungie in starting to Speak, an anti-bullying group in the school that had initiatives that included opening discussions about LGBT rights, racism, and xenophobia. In many regards, I would not have approached any other teacher with this role. I, along with many other students, always seek advice, knowledge, and guidance from Ms. Bungie, and she is always there to help. Outside of the classroom, Ms. Bungie is one of the leading activists for environmental affairs within the community. Ms. Bungie and I started a few projects together in my high school days, including a community garden and a compost program. Engaging many students from the school, Ms. Bungie helped teach students how to grow and tend to a garden. After a summer of learning and growing, all out of her own free time, the vegetables grown were then donated to a local senior's home. Ms. Bungie is an avid volunteer and community leader in Clarenville 
and is often underestimated in her abilities. I cannot honestly think of a person more deserving of this award. Caroline Bungie is a fundamental figure in Clarendon, a mentor, guide, advisor, teacher, activist, conservationist, role model, and impeccable woman. I would urge you please consider her for this award. I will forever advocate for Ms. Bungie as she would for many people in this community. I cannot thank her enough for the immense amount of work she has contributed to Clarenville and its residents. I merely hope you will thank her for this as well. And it is indeed our pleasure to acknowledge Ms. Caroline Bungie as one of the 150 pages in Clarenville. Our next recipient this evening is Dave Gulledge. Dave Gulledge was born, raised, and graduated high school in Port of Basque. He graduated with a diploma in electrical technology from the Marine Institute and worked 35 years with Newfoundland Power. Dave settled in Clarenville over 30 years ago with his wife, Marilyn, and raised two children, Ashley and Jonathan. Since moving to Clarenville, his community involvement has been immense. His community involvements have included with the St. Mary's Anglican Church, a member of the Church Pew Restoration Project, the Church Shingle Replacement Project. He has also been a member of the Triple Bay Eagles Ground Search and Rescue for the past 30 years. During that time, he has been actively involved in building the storage building located on Masonic <coughs> Person. He has also volunteered in many years of fundraising to help fill the storage building with needed search and rescue equipment. He has also been involved in countless search and rescue missions. Dave has also been a member and volunteer of the Canadian, or sorry, of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 27 in Clarenville for the last 25 years. He has held executive positions including President, First Vice, Second Vice, Treasurer, and Secretary. He has been chairperson of both the Bingo and the Bar Committees. Dave has also been a member of the Discovery Trail Snowmobile Club for the past 20 years and has helped raise funds to support the grooming of local trails. We are grateful for the contributions Dave has made to our community and are very pleased to name him a Canada 150 Face of Clarenville. Our next recipient is Alexander Charles Howard Tilly, who was born on the 6th of March, 1916, the son of Brendan Tilly and Annie Aidy, and a direct descendant of the first settlers of Clarenville. Sometime after completing his 11th grade education at the Salvation Army School in Clarenville, he obtained a position as office clerk with A. Duffett and Sons, where he worked for several years. He later took the position of town clerk with the town of Clarenville, a position he held until his retirement. From an early age, Eck, as he was official and affectionately known to all, was a lover of all sports, but hockey was his favorite. And although a disability kept him from playing, he became involved by coaching and timekeeping at all levels. He, along with several others in town, was instrumental in getting the first indoor stadium in Clarenville in the early 1950s a facility that served the town as well as surrounding communities for well over 50 years prior to the building of the new event center where we're to this evening. A pause and a moment of fond, fond memories for the tin can. I actually got to experience uh, some games there. A great facility for sure. Alex could be found at the stadium almost every evening and weekends during the hockey season and would pay for admission to games even though he was working as timekeeper in nearly every one. There were many times when, during the day of a minor hockey tournament, he would pay for admission to each and every game. Between games, he would leave the stadium, pay to get back in, 
then go to the timekeeper's area and do his thing. He was that committed to making the program work. Alex was a lifelong member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows and held several positions in the organization during his lifetime. He was an avid reader and a collector of knowledge, a passionate gardener, growing many varieties of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Some of his flowers still bloom year after year. We are pleased to name Alexander Tilly a Canada 150 Face of Clarendon. I'd ask that family members of Mr. Tilly please come forward to accept his recognition. Thank you. first job in Bay Largent and then moved to Clarenville in 1981. She worked her um, she sort of, oh, sorry, she worked almost her entire career in Clarenville and spent most of that time working in the Foster Adoption Program. Even though it was not officially volunteer, anyone who worked with her knows she put in countless hours of overtime for the benefit of children, birth families, and foster families. There are many people who will be eternally grateful for all her hard work. The volunteer group Eileen is mostly associated with is the Girl Guides of Canada. Eileen became a brand new leader in 1983, with the exception of a short lapse, was with the same unit until the summer of 2011. She, was, she has continued to be an adult member of Girl Guides of Canada and has held several roles throughout her 30 years of guiding. Her wealth of knowledge and support for the youth of the Clarenville area does not go unnoticed as she often assists at district events and is always willing to help out in any capacity. We thank Eileen for her years of service to Girl Guides. The Salvation Army Church is another organization where Eileen has spent countless hours of volunteering. Eileen has always been a very active member in her church and has volunteered in many ways and continues to do so. Locals can often find her helping with the food bank. Since her retirement, she started volunteering with the Claremont Area SPCA. She was part of the committee that helped get the thrift store open. She continues to volunteer at the thrift store on a regular basis. She has volunteered at Riverside Elementary as a member of the school council and as a volunteer for the after school art club. And she also helps with our breakfast program. There has been many other organizations in Claremont that have benefited from Eileen's passion to help others. She has volunteered with figure skating and the breakfast program to name a few. Claremont has been very fortunate to have such a giving person to move into the area all those years ago. She quietly goes about helping where she can and certainly can be considered a very important volunteer to many. Eileen has dedicated her life and her career to helping the most vulnerable in our community. It is our pleasure this evening to award Eileen Johnson a Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville recognition. Clarenville a better place to live. 
The postal telegraph operators were instrumental in keeping the community of Clarenville, which then was the site of an active railway stand, station, branch lines, a working shipyard, the Colas plant, and even a visit from the Italian airships on their way to the World's Fair connected to other locales in Newfoundland and beyond. Prior to the technological advances that we know and use today, telegraph, or Morse or international code, telephone and mail were the primary methods of communication to connect with the outports and other locations. It was the responsibility of the postal telegraph operators to conduct these duties and even carry out banking for the community. The level of trust and confidence placed in the postal telegraph operators by the community would have been enormous since the operators would be aware of personal details in telegrams, conversations, and financial affairs. By receiving the telegraph messages or telephone calls, they would know of important life events, of births and deaths, and then be faced with the task of delivering the messages in person to the home of the recipient. Perhaps Facebook could take a lesson from them in light of recent events. The level of importance of postal telegraph operators to the community in Newfoundland was further underscored during World War II when they were deemed essential servants and not released to serve overseas, but assumed duties related, related sorry, to the war effort in addition to their regular responsibilities. The postal telegraph operators were also very active members of the community as evidenced by their participation in a variety of community activities ranging from guiding, scouting, performing plays, and church events to name a few. The postal telegraph operators in Clarenville and beyond were not only co-workers but friends, whose friendships developed and lasted well beyond their working days. For the historical impact they had on shaping Clarenville, we are pleased to name the Postal Telegraph Workers Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville. Accepting this recognition, we have relatives of Postal Telegraph Workers Karen Saunders, daughter of Daisy Hansford Sprackling, and Alison Horner with her sisters Jewel and Nelda, daughters of Wallace Balsam and nieces of Flo Duffin. Please come forward. Our next recognition award this evening goes to the Clarenville Area Citizens Crime Prevention Committee. The Citizens Crime Prevention Association of Newfoundland and Labrador was formed in 1988. It is comprised of police and citizens who are concerned with making our communities better and safer places <coughs> in which to live. It was felt at that time that the traditional responses to crime in our communities were insufficient and that other responses were needed. The response that was seen as perhaps offering the greatest opportunity for success was the principle of the safer communities approach to crime prevention. The strategies highlighted by this approach and used by our communities were the crime prevention through social development, crime prevention through community-based policing, and crime prevention through opportunity reduction. The Clarenville chapter embodies all these principles through their community partnerships and projects, which over the years have included the Rachel Project, Jail and Bail, White Rodeos, Police Week events, Battle of the Brains, Buddy Benches, Literacy, and even, par even partnering with the St. John's Maple Leafs, and many more. The Clarenville chapter is the pioneer committee of the province, as the Clarenville chapter was actually established one year prior to an actual provincial committee. The Clarenville Committee celebrated its 30th anniversary in 2017. 
For striving to make our community safer, we are very pleased to recognize the Clarenville Area Citizens Crime Prevention Committee as a Canada 150 Face of Clarenville. I would ask members present from the uh, Crime, Crime Prevention Committee to please come forward and accept your award. Gladney's autobiography, 
lumberjack Larry. In 1998, he spoke to multiple groups of students at the request of the Discovery School District and College of the North Atlantic. After natural media, Barry was in the first generation of online freelancers, providing writing and design services for clients locally in the United States and Australia. Before retiring from commercial work in 2006, he specialized in 20th century vintage themes. His 50s menu design for a local restaurant has been viewed more than 1,000 times at his online portfolio, www.behance.net backslash bgn. He was featured in Wes Reed's article about logo design in Atlantic Business Magazine in 1998. His writing, design, and media distribution was crucial in the successful Save White Hills 2000 campaign. You might need to write another one after this winter. <laughs> More recently, Barry's article about the Crest Bus Service appeared in newspapers provincially. He also appeared in the Crest promotional video. He's a tireless advocate in the media for disability issues and a 17-year associate member of the Canadian Legion. His friends showed their love and respect by holding the Music for Morris concert at the Clarenville Event Centre in 2012. In December 2016, he released an unprecedented series of 14 articles about his life with disability, which was also covered in the provincial media. Congratulations, Barry, on being named a Canada 150 face of Clarenville. is undeniable. Over the past several years, Matt has been the voice of the Senior Clerical Caribou's. He has dedicated countless, <coughs> countless hours to this organization that has been an integral part of the town's weekends for many years. I think all fans would agree that Caribou's goal has a nice ring to it when Maddie Blackmore says it on the PA, much better than me. Matt also devotes much of his spare time to coaching in the Clarenville Area Modern Hockey Association. He uses his extensive knowledge of the sport that he grew up playing to help shape the players in the two divisions that his children play in, pre-novice and novice. He is also the Adam C. team coach. He has also been known to help out in other divisions when his judgment is needed to determine lineups for other teams. When a provincial modern hockey tournament is hosted in Clarenville, you can always count on Matt to freely give up his time to convene and oversee the tournament. The young Caribou players count on the young Caribou players count on count on him to be their voice during countless tournaments and special events, and he always comes through for them. If an event in Clarenville is taking place, Matt Blackmore is always there to say yes and lending a hand or to be the voice that everyone knows. He does not hesitate. For all those reasons, we're happy to recognize Matthew Blackmore as a Canada 150 face of America. is to our MHA, Colin Holloway, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Environment, Government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Colin Holloway was elected to the 48th General Assembly as the member of the Terranova District on November 30th, 2015. In December 2015, Colin was appointed Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Industry and Innovation. 
While in this role, he represented Newfoundland and Labrador at the 2016 FPT Ministers of Agriculture Policy Framework discussions in Calgary, Alberta. In August of 2017, Colin was appointed as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Environment. Recently, he represented this province at the 2017 Federal, Provincial and Territorial Ministers of Environment discussions on climate change in Vancouver, British Columbia. Colin holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology from Memorial University of Newfoundland. He is an accredited partnership broker and Colin has a certificate in Applied Behavioral Analysis. Prior to being elected to political office, Colin worked in the public service for more than 26 years. Early in his career, Colin worked as a child management specialist, designing and implementing home-based early childhood development programs for children with developmental disabilities. Colin has extensive experience in socioeconomic development, partnership development, and public policy. He has been a guest presenter at national and international conferences on homelessness, rural economic development, government community partnerships, and public engagement. In 2014, he was nominated for a Public Service Award of Excellence, and in 2013, Colin was an IPAC leadership finalist in the Community University Government Knowledge Collaboration category. Colin has been a longtime volunteer in the Clarenville area. In 2008, he was recognized as a Volunteer of the Year for the Town of Clarenville. Most notably has been his leadership as trustee and chairperson of the former Vista School Board. During his time at the school board, the Clarenville school system was reorganized, resulting in the establishment of Riverside Elementary School and the construction of the new Clarenville Middle School and the Winter Games Complex. Colin also helped establish the Neighborhood of Friends Family Resource Center and was its board chairperson for 10 years. During that time, the organization grew from a literacy center on Moores Road to a fully functioning family resource center with five outreach sites servicing more than 900 children and their families annually. Colin has a strong belief in supporting our young people. As a result, he helped establish the Youth 2 Community Youth Network, becoming its first chairperson, and he helped lead the revitalization of the playground on Moores Road. He is also a former board member and mediator with the Clarenville Area Alternative Measures Committee, an organization dedicated to giving young people a second chance. In 2014, Colin volunteered with the Newfoundland and Labrador Winter Games, providing security at the opening and closing ceremonies as well as at the Athletes' Village. Colin is the former chairperson of Habitat for Humanity Clarenville, a position he held until entering political life. During his tenure, Colin and the Clarenville Board of Directors built the first Habitat for Humanity duplex here in Clarenville. In 2015, the Habitat for Humanity Clarenville Board of Directors received the Corwin Mills Community Cares Award from the Clarenville Area Chamber of Commerce. Colin has volunteered with the Clarenville SPCA for more than 14 years, having served on its Board of Directors. He continues to volunteer for shelter duty every second Thursday, along with his wife, Heather. Since being elected as the MHA for the Terra Nova District, Colin has been instrumental in the establishment of the new Farm and Market of Clarenville Inn, and he is a strong advocate for the revitalization of Elizabeth Swan Park. It's our pleasure this evening to recognize our MHA, Colin Holloway, as one of the 150 faces of Clarenville. community as a whole that can serve as a model for others. He clearly recognizes the importance of youth and the impact that they can have on everyone's future and he has done everything in his power to endorse and support this.
Cliff is a dedicated member of the Clarenville community and has donated countless hours of his time to its betterment. Firstly, Cliff was instrumental in helping to establish the scholarship program at Clarenville High School. While serving as principal of the school in the late 1980s through to the 1990s, he recognized the importance of showcasing the talents and achievement of students and to reward them as they move forward into the next chapter of their lives. Cliff has been a member of the Clarenville Lions Club since the early 1970s. He has held every position in the club as, as zone possible, and well, as well as district governor, leader of half of Newfoundland and Labrador, and council chair, leader of all Atlantic Canada and Maine. Any resident of Clarenville knows how much the club has done for the region. It has raised money to pay for multiple expensive pieces of medical equipment for the Dr. G.B. Cross Memorial Hospital, has supported youth in developing their public speaking skills through their multi-age speak apps, as well as supposed the excuse me, supported the community in hundreds of different aspects through the 50-50 program for which they partnered with the Clarenville Area Co-op. Cliff has become an integral part of the club over the years, and residents of Clarenville know that they are able to approach the Lions Club when in need for various reasons. Through the club, Cliff has been a huge supporter and proponent of the Lions Quest Canada program. This is an organization sponsored through Lions Clubs International that is dedicated to fostering positive youth development by producing and decimating effective tools to empower and unite caring adults in all aspects of young people's lives. This program is offered through the school system and Cliff has been instrumental in helping make sure that funding has come to the area to guarantee that local teachers have the resources and tools required to offer this program to the youth of the area. It isn't a program that is specifically taught such as math or English, rather a program that is intermingled into a child's everyday school routine and eventually, because of a, a, <clears throat> and eventually they bring that through life. Cliff believes in this program and has worked for many years in many capacities to ensure that Clarenville youth benefit from it. In 2002, Cliff was also a key player in starting the Clarenville Leo Club as part of the Lions Club International family, showcasing youth ages 12 to 18. As Leo's young people are able to help change communities and build leadership skills to last a lifetime. After encouragement from a particularly pushy and assertive 12-year-old, his granddaughter, he put the plans in motion to start the club. As a sponsor, he attended all meetings, pushed the members to be innovative in their ideas, and to help the community and supported the club in every endeavor that it took on. To this day, the Clarenville Leo Club is still thriving and doing great things for the town of Clarenville every day. Outside of these specific examples, Cliff was an educator for 30 plus years, and more specifically, an educational leader at the end of his career. He's given his life to bettering the youth of the community. Joan. As an adult, Joan moved to Clarenville and has been volunteering in the town her entire life in various organizations and capacities. She's been very active in her church and served as president of the United Church Women's Group, chair of the Pastoral Relations Committee, member of the official board, and the church choir. She was a Girl Guide leader and served as area camp advisor for many years. She was also involved with Clarenville Minor Hockey as a member of the Hockey Minds Group. Joan was a member of the executive of the Flying Blades Figure Skating Club for several years, serving in various positions, including president. Joan has volunteered for the Qantas Music Festival here in Clarenville. Joan is, was also a member of the Clarenville Lioness Club and served in many executive capacities, including secretary, treasurer, president, and zone chairperson. The Lioness eventually joined forces with the Clarenville Lions Club, and Joan has continued to volunteer her services there. Again, she has served in many executive positions, including president, secretary, and is currently treasurer. Joan has been an active member of the Lions Club organization in Clarenville for 35 years, and also has served as district governor for Lions District in 4 from 2006 to 2007. She is currently chairperson of the District Literacy Committee and the Co-op Lions 50-50 Committee. Joan volunteers for the Canadian Cancer Society annual daffodil campaign, blood donor clinics, and many other lines and community activities. Clarenville is very fortunate to have these two individuals who have given so much of their time to our town and continue to do so. We are so pleased to recognize Cliff and Joan Ford as Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville.
Now smile, Mr. Forward. <laughs> this is Forward. <laughs> well, folks, I believe you've earned some entertainment. Jill is a very organized individual. She had a piece of pink paper here that said entertainment. I missed that little note. <laughs> Folks, let me introduce uh, some students from Claremont High School. We have Andrew Best, we have Kathleen Filler, we have Chantel Goss, and we have Victoria White. Young volunteers here with us this evening uh, to bring their gift of music with us. And they're going to be performing for us Toxic by Britney Spears. And here they are.
1992, the Canadian Red Cross Society awarded her again with a Certificate of Merit for her outstanding volunteer service. And in 1990, she was awarded a Certificate of Appreciation for her significant, her significant contributions to the Dr. G.B. Cross Memorial Hospital. In 1954, Cassie became a member of the Rebecca's, an international service-oriented organization and a branch of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows. She faithfully attends monthly meetings, have originally bought monthly for many years, but decreased due to aging membership. She has held many executive positions within the order, including Warden and Noble Grant. Over the years, her work with the Rebecca's has included fundraising for the Lodge and the community, catering and hosting events, organizing and hosting district meetings, providing and administering scholarships, and general service to the community. Cassie is certified as a life member of the United Church Women, and she has provided many years of service and support to the organization, its members, her church, and its congregation. In 2012, she received a Charter Member Certificate for 50 years of service and dedication to the UCW. She was also awarded a multi-denominational certificate of appreciation for her significant contributions to patients and pastoral care at the G.B. Cross Memorial Hospital and the Dr. Albert O'Manny Memorial Manor. In 2007, Claremont was selected by the WHO as one of five towns in Canada to participate in the Age-Friendly Communities Project. Cassie, at this point approaching her 80s, began working with the Gather Group a service providing activities that enhance quality of life and exercise, socialization, continuous learning, intergenerational activities, entertainment, outings, and mutual care. Cassie has received other awards and certificates for volunteerism, most notably in 2001, the International Year of Volunteers, the Government of Canada rec recognized her for outstanding service and contribution as a volunteer. In 2013, the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador issued her a Certificate of Appreciation in recognition of her community contribution and volunteer service. For many years, while her children participated in sport, Cassie volunteered with youth organizations such as the Clarenville Area Honor Hockey Association. Cassie's reasons why she volunteers are simple. I do it because I enjoy it, and I like working behind the scenes. It gives me great pleasure this evening to recognize Cassie Ogney as a Canada 150 Face of Clarenville recipient. Our next Canada 150 Face of Claremont recipient is Ted Cooper. Ted Cooper was a recreation advocate all of his life. He dedicated his energy and time to ensuring recreational programs for the community and the inclusion of persons with disabilities in community sport and recreation activities. He was instrumental in overseeing the construction of the Shoal Harbor Community Centre, a facility that was named the Ted Cooper Community Centre in his honour following his untimely death at the age of 52. He was former chairman of the Shoal Harbor Recreation Commission, president of the Shoal Harbor Softball League, and committee member of the Junior Hockey League. In addition, he served with the Claremont Fire Department for 11 years and was recognized as an honorary member in 1989 for his contribution and unselfish dedication. For his commitment and service to the community, Ted Cooper is recognized as one of the Canada 150 faces of Clarenville, and we would ask that the family members please come forward to accept this recognition. Thank you.
next recognition this evening goes to the Ad Fellows Organization. As an organization, the Independent Order of Ad Fellows aims to provide a framework that promotes personal and social development. Large degrees and activities aim to improve and elevate every person to a higher, nobler plane to extend sympathy and aid to those in need, making their burdens lighter, relieving the darkness of despair, to war against vice in every form, and to be a great moral power and influence for the good of humanity. Through working in their local communities, they understand that they can make a difference in the lives of people in our world. That is exactly what the IOOF Lodge in Clarenville has been doing. For over 50 years, the Ad Fellows have been dedicated to serving and improving their community. They are dedicated to providing access for seniors to affordable and reliable transportation for outings, such as medical and banking appointments, social activities, grocery shopping, visiting friends, etc. They also provide help to the GB Cross Hospital, help for patients, help for students through scholarship, and help for diabetes and spina bifida. The community contributions over the years of the Ad Fellows have been inspiring. We are very pleased to recognize the Ad Fellows as a Canada 150 face of Clarenville. I would ask that members present please come forward to accept the recognition. Mr. Baker just told that it's over 90 years they've been in our community, so I asked them. Our next recipients are the Kinsmen and Kinnett Clubs of Clarenville. The Kinsmen Club of Clarenville received their charter in 1775 when 30 young men from the Clarenville area became members of this young men's service organization. Kinsmen theme has always been serving the community's greatest needs. The organization was active in major projects from raising funds to supporting childhood diseases such as cystic fibrosis to providing money for research for multiple sclerosis. Kinsmen participated in all aspects of improving community by funding equipment for the Kinsmen Cormac Playground, sponsoring the Kitty's Bike Parade during clerical days, and making many donations to community organizations and school programs. It is for these reasons that the Clarenville Kinsmen and Kinnets are being recognized as part of the 150 faces of Clarenville. And we would ask any members uh, to please come forward to accept this recognition. Thank you. this evening is Eli Russell. Eli Russell, a resident of Winterbrook, has a strong connection to Clarenville as the previous owner-operator of two businesses in the town, R&B Services, ER Heating, and through his involvement in the community, particularly with Clarenville Minor Hockey. His connection to Minor Hockey started in 1988 when his daughter Rebecca began playing. From the time she stepped on the ice at the old Clarenville Stadium, Eli spent countless hours helping out on the ice coaching and managing teams as Rebecca made her way through the Clarenville Minor Hockey System. In 1995, during a trip to the Canada Games in Grand Prairie, Alberta, where Rebecca skated for Team Newfoundland and Labrador, 
Eli saw the growth and potential of the female game across the country. He wondered how many more young girls in this area would have an interest in the game if they had the option of playing with and against other girls. And it was there the idea of racing an all-female caribou's team came to mind. There were already a few other female teams across the province in St. John's, Mount Pearl, the Southern Shore, Lewisport, and Twillingate. And Eli was determined to add a team from Clarenville to the mix. Upon his return, the idea was pitched to modern hockey executive. Interest in the community was gauged, and wheels were put in motion to bring the idea to reality. At the start of the 1995-96 season, Clarenville Modern Hockey iced its first female team. With Eli leading the way as their head coach and director, the team went on to capture the Provincial Female Championship in their very first season. He continued to serve as coach. Didn't hurt that Rebecca was probably on the team, for sure. <laughs> he continued to serve as the coach and director of the division until 2003. The female game has continued to grow in the Clarenville area since 1995 due to the strong foundation Eli helped build. The division has grown from one team to the three teams and under nine program it has today. And numerous female players from the Clarenville Modern Hockey System have gone on to play at higher levels and provincial teams and at prep schools and universities outside the province. We thank Eli for pioneering the female hockey program and we are pleased to recognize him as a Canada 150 face of Clarenville. Our next recipient this evening is Dave Hopkins. Dave Hopkins was born and raised in Buckins, where he spent many of his boyhood days fishing, catching rabbits, and growing up next to the stadium, where he spent all of his winters on the ice. He started the sport at the age of three and played hockey all through his life. In the early 1980s, he played with the Clarenville Caribou's junior team and then enjoyed several years of friendly competition with his Heber hockey buddies in the Recreation League. It would be his love of hockey that had him battling in the corners even during the last hours of his life. In 1988, Dave and his wife Christine moved to Clarenville. In 1992, they were blessed with their daughter Katie. And as soon as she was old enough, Dave had her on the ice at the stadium. Dave first became involved with modern hockey in Clarenville in 2003 when he signed Katie up to play. He and his old buddy Tom Walsh began coaching the female team and after a few years on the bench, Dave decided to get involved with the association and the executive. Dave took on the role of director for the female division and stayed there until 2010, even assuming the role of Clarenville Minor Hockey Vice President for a term. Dave was heavily involved in the development of female hockey in the Clarenville area. He pushed for extra ice time for the growing number of girls playing and was instrumental in helping female hockey evolve from one to three age divisions. In 2010, Dave was recognized for all his hard work and dedication when presented with two awards. Here at home, he was the recipient of the Leroy Miller Award from the Clarenville Area Recreation Association for his contributions to recreation in Clarenville. And at the provincial level, he was the winner of the Hockey Newfoundland and Labrador Provincial Award for outstanding service to female hockey in the province. Today, the community remembers Dave and his contribution to hockey in the following ways. The other 20 female team in Clarenville Modern Hockey have a Dave Hawkins Memorial Tournament each year, and the Discovery Healthcare Foundation also holds a memorial charity game in his, in his name every year as well. Over the years, as a result of his knowledge, dedication, and encouragement, the team progressed from having seasons with virtually no wins to becoming provincial champions for three consecutive years. He helped foster the development of the girls' skills, their ability to play as a team, and their love for the sport. Aside from this, he took great pleasure and pride in ensuring that each player came away from the stadium with a smile on her face, no matter what the outcome of the game. His main goal for his girls, more so than winning, was that they would have fun. Anyone who crossed paths with Dave, whether it be at work, at the stadium, or out in the community, saw a man who always treated others with respect and compassion. If a man's will was determined by his acts of kindness and love, then Dave was rich beyond measure. 
We are pleased to recognise Dean Harkins as a Canada 150 Face of Clarenbrook. And I would ask Dean to come to Our next Canada 150 Face of Clarendon recipient is Dennis Squires. Dennis was born in Grand Falls where he lived with his family until he completed his high school education. At the age of 20 years, he was accepted into the ranks of the RCMP and was sent to Regina for recruitment training. Upon graduation, he was transferred to Nova Scotia where he spent 33 years in active police work in various locations within that province. Some of his duties included major crime investigations, national security enforcement, internal affairs, and VIP security. He retired in 1998 with the rank of sergeant and spent the next five years working as an investigator for the Nova Scotia Police Commission. In 2003, Dennis and his wife Catherine decided to return to their home province of Newfoundland and after visiting many towns decided to move to Clarendon. At that time, they had no connection here, but felt it was a very beautiful town with lots of amenities and a great location to retire. Shortly after settling in a home on Shoal Harbor Drive, Dennis felt one of the best ways to assimilate in our community was to become active in volunteer work. He participated as a mediator with the youth justice system, which allowed young offenders to take advantage of disposing of an offense through the program of alternate measures. Dennis also volunteered for a period of time with the local chapter of Crime Stoppers. He was instrumental in forming Canadian Red Cross disaster response teams in Clarenville, Arnold's Cove, Catalina, and Bonavista. These teams received training to combat major and small scale disasters. The teams were very active during Hurricane Igor, and as a result of his role during that disaster, Dennis was presented with a service award from the Red Cross. Additionally, he became a Red Cross instructor and taught various levels of training to the other volunteers throughout the province. Along with disaster response, Dennis continues to assist the Red Cross in fundraising initiatives in the Clarenville area. Dennis has been active for the past three years with the Clarenville Regional Extended Seniors Transportation Program, or CREST. He is on the Executive Committee as the Chair of the Drivers and Subcommittee, and in addition to being a driver himself. He has become a volunteer with the Eastern Health and has been active in visitations with seniors at the Dr. Albert O'Manning Memorial Manor. Dennis is also an active member of St. Mary's Anglican Church and is currently serving as Rector's Warden. This is an administrative volunteer role and as an executive member of Select Vestry, he participates with other church volunteers in the overall management of church business. As a member of his church, Dennis, along with other volunteers, has attended the Women's Correctional Center here in Clarenville, where presentations of a spiritual nature are provided to the inmates. It's our pleasure this evening to recognize Dennis Squires as a Canada 150 Face of Clarenville. Our next recipient this evening is Tom Walsh. For 20 years, Tom worked as an educator and volunteered as a coach in the Clarenville area. During those 20 years, Walsh encouraged our youth to develop as well-rounded individuals, which included sport, fitness, and education. Tom coached teams in volleyball, basketball, swimming, and hockey. Our local youth and minor teams won regional and provincial championships in volleyball, ball hockey, swimming, and ice hockey with Coach Walsh. Tom's committee work, which has influenced our youth, included local school councils, CARA, the Clarenville Winter Games Steering Committee. 
He also was involved with local minor executives. Tom has always enjoyed working with our Clarenville and area youth and strives for his students and athletes to reach their highest level, both as an athlete and as a well-rounded person. Through his mentoring, Tom has positively influenced many young people in Clarenville and beyond. Walsh continues to work with provincial and national teams in ball hockey. He has coached national teams to two gold medals and a bronze medal. Tom was an assistant manager for two gold medals and a silver medal at the World Junior Ball Hockey Championships. Tom has been the under-15 provincial ball hockey head coach for the past two years. During the summer of 2018, Tom will coach our provincial under-15 ball hockey team at the national tournament in St. John, New Brunswick, and our junior team Canada under-16 East squad at the World Championships in Czech Republic. Seven Newfoundlanders from Tom's under-15 2017 team continue to draw land train with him today and will travel with him to the World Ball Hockey Championships this summer. Tom continues to serve on the Provincial Ball Hockey Executive. Our Clarenville youth have been so fortunate to be coached and influenced by Tom Walsh. We are so pleased to name him a Canada 150 Face of Clarenville. there folks we are almost there our next recipient is Richard Power Richard moved to Clarenville in 1998 with his wife Catherine and their children Matthew Mark and Katie since that time he has been actively involved in community organizations as well as within his profession he has been active with the Clarenville Area Chamber of Commerce serving on the board from 2010 to president and is the immediate past presidents He's been active with our Clarenville Rotary Club from 2005 to present and an active member and past president. He's been involved with the Alpine Development Alliance Corporation, the White Hills Board, current member of the Board of Directors and Chair of the Finance Committee. He's been part of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Newfoundland from 2002 to 2009. He's been a board member and chair. And he's also served on committees with the Canadian Institute of Chartered Accountants. He was awarded the Lifetime Fellowship for Service for the FCA to the CA profession in 2009. He's been on the Our Lady Fatima Parish Council from 1998 to 2015, serving as chairperson and treasurer. He's volunteered with the Newfoundland and Labrador Health Board Association Finance Committee from 2003 to 2005, the Clarenville Area Minor Hockey, Hockey Association from 1998 to 2006 as an executive member and a coach. He's been part of the Clarenville Minor Baseball Association from 2000 to 2008 as an executive member and a coach, and the Clarenville Middle School Council as a member from 2004 to 2009. For Richard's contributions to our community, we are pleased to recognize him as a Canada 150 face of Clarenville. Richard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sabrina Andrews, and I think part of my job is to give Richard and Jill a little bit of a break. Thank you. A lot of work. Okay. I have the privilege of, I'm going to make an assumption here, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I might be nominating um, one of the youngest. Miss Vance, maybe? One of. one of. Yep, here it goes. My pleasure, actually. Monica Snow has dedicated a lot of her 17 years to helping others. I've known Monica since she was a small girl. 
At a very young age, she began organizing fundraisers for charity, specifically World Vision. When Monica was in grade eight, she skipped a class trip to St. Pierre with Mr. Power, which I'm sure would have been a blast. However, she chose to visit the poverty-stricken country of Honduras. Honduras is the second poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. And in 2015, Monica, as part of the Clarenville Connect team, visited her sponsor child, who she has been 100% sponsoring on her own. There, Monica witnessed firsthand how so many other people live, how they survive. When I asked Monica about this experience, she told me that it was incredible and it's something she will never forget. From that trip forward, Monica became an activist for the less fortunate. In grade nine, she shared with my daughter Rachel the position of CMS student president, and in that role, she organized several fundraising events like the 30 Hour Famine and Coffee Houses. She later that year traveled to Kenya with World Vision to see how the 30 Hour Famine funds were actually being used. Monica has since been awarded the title of Youth Ambassador with World Vision and has held that position for the last three years. Since her time at CMS, Monica has continued to be part of the CHS Student Council. Anything humanitarian that needs to be attended to, Monica is quickly there to see that it's done. Local food banks, Vacation Bible School, CHS School Recycling Program, a new Alpha Program, Christmas Shoebox Campaign, and Tom's, A Day Without Shoes, are all just some of the programs that she's been involved in over the last several years. According to her mother, she must be the only student who recycles at CHS according to the number of bags she brings home. I'm sure Ms. Bowie can attest to that. In her spare time, and I'm not sure how much spare time Monica actually has, um, she's been a bit of an environmentalist and a conservationist. Together with her friend Morgan, they created beautiful watercolor paintings. That money was raised and donated to a program called Me To We, where a mobile clinic was purchased in Africa. Monica has been recycling clothing and turning these old articles into beautiful, new, beautiful, sorry, new clothes. In fact, this past December, she wore a dress every single day for the entire month and raised funds to help fight human trafficking. Monica is very active in her church and plays a big role in organizing events and promoting goodwill. The New Life Youth Group, Kids Church, and Sunday Morning Cafe are just part of her everyday weekend. In 2016, Monica visited our country's capital to take part in a unique program where World Vision invited her to come share her experience in Honduras. There, she met famous and accomplished Canadian, Canadians, developed her leadership skills, and enjoyed, no doubt, an extraordinary experience. This sort of trip gave her the opportunity to make connections, mingle with the powers to be at the federal government level. I have no doubt that Monica will continue to be an advocate for change, a supporter for those in need, and maybe even a voice for those who have no voice. Monica is the strong, silent type, whose actions speak louder than words. She's respected among her peers, loved by all who know her. When I spoke to Monica's mom about this nomination, she told me a funny story, and I just want to share it with you. A couple of years ago, Monica's parents left the province to go away for a conference, and her nan came to stay with her. In the few days that her parents were away, Monica spent a full day barefoot, chopped off most of her hair for shade for the brave, and she didn't eat for 30 hours. All for charity. She later said to her mom, Mom, I really hope that Nan doesn't think I'm crazy. <laughs> My response would be, no, Monica, you're actually pretty incredible. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce that Ms. Monica Snow is one of the 150 faces of Carmel.
Our next recipient uh, for a Canada 150 face of Clarenville is Chess Stanford. Chess Stanford has been a community volunteer for many years, giving his time in many capacities. Some of his involvements include, he's been a member of the Clarenville Lions Club since 1969, where he's held several board and committee positions, including secretary, two two-year terms, and president for two two-year terms, and is currently a member of the board of directors and co-chairman of the building committee. He was a former chairperson and member of Memorial United Church Board of Management, and currently he is a member of the Memorial United Church Men's Fellowship Club. He served a three-year term as central treasurer for the Clarenville Deep White Pastoral Charge of the United Church. He was a member of the board of directors for Clarenville Area Minor Hockey Association from 1978 to 1982, and he was a volunteer with the Canadian Cancer Society Daffodil Campaign. He's a Lions Club volunteer with Canadian Blood Services Donation Program. For his contributions to our community, we are pleased to recognize Chess Stanford as a Canada 150 Face of Clarence. in many different ways. In minor hockey, Dan has helped in a major way. He has served as the president of the association from 2013 to 2014, and this was even after his own child had finished being involved with the minor hockey system. In the decade or so prior to his term as president, Dan had many jobs as part of Clarenville Minor Hockey, from overseeing the purchase and the maintenance of goalie equipment to driving a bus full of excited players to games across the province. Dan also coached many teams over the years, and in particular, as someone with the appropriate coaching certification, volunteered on two occasions to coach B teams in the provincial tournaments when teams found themselves without a head coach. Once again, on at least one of these occasions, he didn't even have a child playing on the team. Dan also has a driver's license that allows him to operate a bus, and he has volunteered his services as a bus driver on many occasions. In particular, uh, and I want to say this nomination came from Riley Fitzgerald, and he said, in particular, I know of many times he drove for minor and high school hockey. One occasion he drove a midget team to Marystown as per the director's instructions, only to find that the games were actually being played in Whitburn. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most consistent capacities Dan has volunteered in has been timekeeper and scorekeeper for almost every hockey event held in Clarence. For almost a decade, Dan has worked the clock for almost every minor hockey game and tournament. He has also done this for high school hockey and for the Four Nations Cup games that were held in Clarenville in 2010. Dan also volunteers at the Clarenville Minor Hockey Bingo and has been doing that for close to 10 years. As a senior hockey volunteer, Dan has been part of the Caribou's executive and has, and has served on many committees for Caribou-related events, including the, when Clarenville hosted the Allen Cup in 2015. Dan has also been a goal judge for years and has been in the official timekeeper for the Clarenville Caribou's home games. Dan is also a member of the Royal Canadian Legion and, and has helped organize and run many events. He can often be found manning the bar or working as security, and in 2017 was presented the Legion Certificate of Merit for his efforts in saving the life of a visitor to the Legion by performing CPR until paramedics arrived. As part of the LABO 4-H Club, Dan one summer, and um, Dan and his family sorry, hosted a Japanese student as part of the 4-H program. In Grand Search and Rescue, Dan is a member of our local rescue team and has participated on many occasions in the search for missing individuals. Family members of the missing have singled out Dan in particular as someone who has been of significant help and compassion in times of extreme loss and emotional turmoil. 
Um, this again is Stephen from Riley. He says, I am sure there are other areas where Dan has given freely of his time and skills. He is someone who has helped me and my family on many occasions from fixing vehicles broken down on the Trans Canada Highway to bringing loads of refuge, refuse to the dump. If we need help at all, all I have to do is ask Dan. Dan has also had significant back pain due to disc problems and has had this ailment for the past 10 to 15 years. Because of this, Dan does much of his volunteering under extra duress and pain, which many other volunteers do not have to endure. For all these reasons, we are pleased to recognize Dan Seward as a Canada 150 Face of Clarence. Our final recipient this evening is the Alpine Development Alliance Corporation. Located just one kilometer west of Clarendon, nestled across 55 acres of ski and moor terrain, is White Hills Resort, Eastern Newfoundland Winter Playground. I'm so happy it's there. That's a major reason why I chose to live in there. It was an important spot. Here one will find a number of trails waiting to be explored on ski, snowboard, or snowshoes. White Hills offers a variety of downhill trails and blades that reach to over 750 vertical feet, as well as a fully licensed restaurant. White Hills Resort is an incredible asset that truly sets Clarenville apart from other communities in the province. The resort is operated by Alpine Development Alliance Corporation, a not-for-profit organization incorporated in November of 2000. At that time, the town of Clarenville gave the corporation the mandate to oversee all aspects of the operations of the White Hill Ski Resort in Clarenville. The corporation is governed by a nine-person volunteer board of directors. These individuals, many of whom do not even ski, meet regularly during the operating season and are intimately involved with the Hills operations. Board members give generously of their time, knowledge, and experience to give back to their community and to provide people living on the east coast of our province with the opportunity to experience downhill skiing. The commitment of the Alpine Development Alliance Corporation over the years has allowed Clarenville to maintain this incredible infrastructure which contributes to a strong sense of community and creates an atmosphere that encourages healthy active living a wonderful place to live and to raise a family. In addition to this, White Hills also contributes very significantly to the economy in our community. The operation employs 50 seasonal employees, sees approximately 7,800 visitors every year, and brings in revenues between 600,000 to 800,000 a year, depending on the season. The annual spin-off in the community to hotels, gas stations, restaurants, and other retail operations is estimated at a, between two to two and a half million dollars. In recognition of all that Alpine Development Alliance Corporation has contributed to our community, current and past board members, we would like to recognize the organization as one of the Canada 150 faces of Clarenville. And I'd ask the members presently serving and those past and those past to please come forward and accept this award. Snow showing, even though snow is melting down Shoal Harbor and Clarenville, 
Lots of snow up there, so spread the word. We need a good Easter week. All right, so tell people, come to Clarenville. We have lots of hotels. If not, we can volunteer our beds. <laughs> Seriously, though, they, uh, they've done a great job in a, a very difficult winter. They should be commended for that. Okay, now we'll take one, two, I'm now going to ask the chairperson of our Canada 150 committee, Jill Monk, uh, and before I bring her up here, just a, a quick note and a thanks to her from all of us who served on that committee. It was uh, it was a great uh, great season uh, of, uh, of events that she she led us in and, and put forward, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, bring her forward to bring closing remarks this evening. Thank you, Chair. I know you. enough tonight so I'm going to be very brief but there are a few things that I did want to say. Uh, this ceremony this evening officially finishes our Canada 150 celebrations. I know we're a few months late but this was a very big program and ended up taking a lot more time than we had anticipated. So glad we did it um, but here we are. Uh, we've had a great year of special events and activities in our town and I would like to thank my committee, the Canada 150 committee, for their creativity, time and efforts in organizing such a successful celebration. It certainly was a great community building uh, year for us here in Clarenville. I'd also like to thank Mayor Russell uh, for asking me to chair the committee. I love to do things like this so it was a great honor to work with the town and of course my committee on this tremendous project. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the Canada 150 Faces of Clarenville recipients. Many of you are here in the audience tonight. I know many of you have traveled actually to be here tonight, and I'm very grateful for that. I think out of the 150, I'm pretty sure there's at least over 100 different people and groups represented in the theater tonight, so I think that just shows that how much people appreciated the program. I would ask when we do conclude this evening, we are going to try to get a group photo, so anybody who's involved as a, a personal recipient or part of a group, I do ask that you stay behind and Mr. Tilly is going <laughs> to take a picture for us. Um, I'd also like to extend a special thanks to the volunteers who helped on our selection committee. This was no easy task. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Clarenville is that we are driven by volunteers and people who achieve great things, and that's something we can all be very proud of. Um, I'd like to especially acknowledge Lee Wiseman and Nancy Robbins for taking the leadership in this project and acknowledge their committee members, Bruce Strong, Ann Lundrigan, and Councillor Rod Nickel. I'd also like to say a big thank you to the EEC uh, staff. They're always great supporting us in all our endeavors. And I'd also like to say thank you to Larry Reed and the Crest uh, organization for helping us. They were really great. They jumped on board and helped us plan and organize everything this evening and the reception that's inside uh, when we finish. I just want to say, you know, I know it's been a long evening, but one thing that I've really uh, appreciated through this whole process, growing up and living in Clarenville all my life, there are so many people you don't really realize the impact they have on building your community. You might think you know what they do, but until you hear the stories that were presented over the past year and a half, I'm not sure you truly understand how much time and commitment goes into building such a wonderful town, and I think we're just so lucky that we can say that we call Clarenville home, and I'm so appreciative of everyone. It's been a wonderful year, and I wish everybody uh, who traveled this evening a safe drive home. All right, folks, I'll ask everyone now if you're able to stand and please uh, join us in the scene of the old to Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs>